Welcome to the presentation on Edith Clark and the development of Afro-Caribbean families. My name is Trishel Gooden and let's jump right in. Who was Edith Clark? She was a well-known Caribbean anthropologist. She was born in Westmoreland in Jamaica in 1896. She was deemed an elite due to the fact that she was born into wealth as she was the daughter of Hugh Clark, a custos of the parish. A custos is a person that was appointed by the governor general and is, is a representative of him within the parish. Her family was known for advocacy on behalf of the poor and for social reform. She decided to confront the realities of poverty and marginalization, which were common during that time, as we know. She obtained a diploma of anthropology at the London School of Economics in 1931. She even undertook anthropological work and studies in Africa from 1932 to 1933. She returned to Jamaica, fortunately, and she joined the local service in 1936 to work with like-minded people. She died at the age of 83, unfortunately, in the year of 1979. One of her most renowned work was her research on Afro-Caribbean families, which she explored in My Mother Who Fathered Me. We will get into that in a short while. Her work has provided another perspective to sociologists and anthropologists, especially in the Caribbean. Afro-Caribbean families. The main focus of the study has been emphasized on Afro-Caribbean families in the Caribbean who are on the lower end of the economic strata. This means persons who are poor, families that were less fortunate. From the study from E. Fraser, it has been concluded that slavery and plantation life completely eradicated and destroyed majority of the African culture that was present. This has resulted in the adaptation of European ideologies such as the structure of family. Within the Afro-Caribbean population, women are known as the backbone of the family and many have decided to raise the children independently. And of course, we have seen this in our everyday life. Mustafa also adds that European theorists view the Caribbean family as dysfunctional. They also believe the absence of one or even both parents from the traditional family structure, which is the nuclear, as common in the Afro-Caribbean families, it may have an effect on the child's upbringing. Clark conducted intensive research on the Afro-Caribbean families to review the family structures that were present. The major contributions and tenets of Edith Clark to sociology. Edith Clark ranks among the founding parents of British social anthropology. Her subject matter was that living social beings and society as functioning wholes, similarly to some sociologists as we know. She was one of the major protagonists for a structural functionalist approach to the study of family. This was first introduced by Emile Durkheim, which we also know. She conducted research entitled My Mother Who Fathered Me, where she examined three communities which she named Sugartown, Mocha, and Orange Grove. If you look to the side of the screen, you can see an example of this work. To structural functionaries such as Clark herself, an important role of the family is to be raised to be well-rounded individual. Clark established that the success performance of socialization relied heavily on how closely the family conformed to the nuclear family structure. She also noted that extended households were not as common in area as Sugartown, which were financially challenged, hence there were less marriages. Contrastingly, in Orange Grove and Mecca, extended families were common as the family tended to gravitate to help each other in the various economic and social endeavors. Basically, the family would get together to help each other out. Instead of one part of the family living over there and struggling, the another part living over there and also struggling. So they saw it fit to come together, pool their resources, help them to bring them out of that impoverished state. The next point, 
Clark concluded that the rigid gender roles were cast upon females in economical sta economically stable environments such as orange towns. This was also the case in poorer towns, except that the fathers were not as always involved in the children's lives. This shows and emphasizes the point made by many sociologists, especially the ones of the feminist perspective, that regardless of economic status, during this time, women were still subjected to domestic chores. This can be brought back to one of the points made earlier that women are the backbone of the family. They're the backbone. Clark established through the study of the towns that we mentioned earlier that the type of union preferred were due to the economic conditions and social status of the various couples. This is evident in Orange Grove, which was more economically stable, as marriage was expected. So when they were economically stable, they had money, cash flow was coming in, people expected them to get married. On the other hand, in Sugartown, that experienced financial constraints, sexual activities and relations outside of marriage was deemed more acceptable. Hmm. The rate of illegitimate children being born was a matter of concern for Clark, as she noted that the children in Mocha and Orange Grove had a better chance of being properly socialized than those in Sugartown because of the high levels of absent fathers. She also goes in depth into the whole situation of absent fathers and how it affects the children. Moving on to the major criticisms of Clark's work, my mother who fathered me that we mentioned earlier. Her interest and expertise, it happened to be on Jamaican family life, specifically the issue of fatherhood, which I had just said. It still is present in the Caribbean. And just like other sociologists and anthropologists, Clark faced criticisms to her point of view. We are going to go through them. Clark's view on family life and male-female relationships were not shared by majority of the Jamaican elite according to an esteemed author, Barrow. From the prejudice of their social group, they stereotyped Jamaican lower class men as irresponsible fathers and sought to block her proposal to have paternity registered. So Clark's proposal was that when a child is born, their paternity must be on the birth certificate. They must be on the birth, birth certificate. Next point. In the view of some Jamaican elites, this recommended legislation that they must be on the birth certificate, um, that it would be ineffective. They claim that women would take advantage of this and register the name of men who are not the biological father of their children. They do have a point, but it is a matter for up for debate. Christine Barrow, a Barbadian professor, states that many anthropologists of the Caribbean such as Clark, they tried to fit complex and varied family patterns into a simple typology. Ultimately, to borrow, and she quotes, all the labels and types become unmanageable, increasingly meaningless, and an end in itself rather than a tool for understanding family dynamics. Basically, this is saying that all of this, it is unnecessary, it is becoming confusing, and it's just not working out. All the labels, it's just becoming too much. And it's not helping to really understand family dynamics. A next point by also Barrow, she states that the potential Caribbean theoretical insights that might have emerged from her work, they were stifled in the process of privileging social welfare reform. M.G. Smith, also, it's highlighted by Barrow, he commented as Clark wrote her work, My Mother Who Fathered Me, that it was seriously handicapped, and I quote, he actually said this, and I quote, it was seriously handicapped by the lack of conceptual framework adequate to analysis. He's talking about her work that she did, um, My Mother Who Fathered Me. He's basically calling it inadequate. It wasn't enough. It wasn't a profound analysis. It wasn't enough. 
Many find missing from Clark's work is an exploration of gender ideology and identity which seeks to uncover the meaning of Caribbean masculinities and femini femininities of fatherhood and manhood. So they see that this exploration of the gender, it is not present. Next point, Lazarus Black, a professor of anthropology, interprets and concludes that mothers have never and do not today father children. This is an actual quote that he has made. He has an entire discourse about it, a discourse about it. It completely contrasts from Clark's view, of course that mothers step in to father their children. So Lazarus Brack has completely different views, contrasting views from Clark. Edith Clark's main contributions continued. This is to Caribbean sociology in particular. Social conditions in Jamaica during the 1930s, along those of most other Caribbean countries, they were not good. They were appalling. According to the esteemed author, Chinapu, 2014, he highlights that the already depressed standards of living deteriorated even further as a large number of migrants returned, they're coming back, to increase the ranks of unemployment and the impoverished. By the late 1930s, protest riots broke out, spreading throughout the Caribbean, in Jamaica as elsewhere. This provided the catalyst for change, sparking the growth, growth of indigenous political parties, trade union activities, and social reforms. This was one of the driving force for Clark to devote her life and knowledge to a career in social services. Basically, what this is saying that during the 1930s, from all the riots breaking out from everybody due to the social conditions, this allowed for a lot of social groups, parties, trade unions to be formed to ease these problems and to get things back to normalcy or in the way that they would want. Clark's research, as we mentioned once more, it left a profound impact on the study of sociology, specifically in the Caribbean. She focused on the issue of fatherhood, migration on the community, and the impact of the livelihood of family members left behind. So yes, she may have made a contribution to sociology as a whole, but it has a specific impact on Caribbean sociology. Protagonist of the structural functionalist approach to the study of the family in the Caribbean includes Fernando Henriquez, Judith Blake, R.T. Smith, M.G. Smith, and of course, the woman of the hour, Edith Clark. They studied families in Barbados, Jamaica, Guyana, Trinidad, Guy Grenada, and Caracol. Both M.G. Smith and Clark you can see M.G. Smith here at the bottom of the screen at the left, and this is Clark, as we know. They conducted a research on the family structures common in the Caribbean. Clark focused in Jamaica while M.G. Smith in Guyana, so there were some similarities, but also some differences. Chinapu, the esteemed author, mentions that they both utilize formal interviews and in-depth participation observation together with statistical data on household composition and conjugal union status. So here we can literally see how profound her work was because she did not go to South Africa to study. She did not go to Europe to study the society. She came back to Jamaica in the Caribbean to contribute to Caribbean sociology. She explores the Afro-Caribbean family structure and has provided a lot of insight for other researchers, especially in the Caribbean. Economics play a vital role in family structure in the Caribbean. Because of the high levels of poverty and unemployment, Clark highlighted that this was one of the causes for absentee parents in the Caribbean as they go in search of a better life leaving the children behind. Additionally, from her own research, as highlighted by the esteemed author Mustafa, that it was not proper for a man to propose marriage in these societies as we established before, economically deprived, 
without being economically stable. So if they're broke, they didn't see it fit to propose start a family then. It was also derogatory for a wife to go out and work. In the views of Edith, of course. It was concluded that the family types differed according to social class. Upper class families were usually found to be nuclear, middle class families were mainly common law, and lower class as prominent as once again in the Caribbean were single parent. This goes back to our original point that the, men, the women were the backbone of the family and some chose to be single parents, some chose. This proved Clark's point that the amount of family funds is a major factor for marriage. Because of the lack of funds, as we can see, money is a big topic in our research today. Um, because of the lack of funds for a large amount of citizens in the Caribbean, it has led to large amounts of households to be considered as single parents. Clark's research has aided in the understanding of various social problems that come from the absence of a parent specifically the fathers as we said many times as the women are being single mothers the fathers may not always be around so, so some social problems can be derived terms utilized by edith there were a numerous of terms constantly used throughout her work we will just focus on three today. Three that I believe to be very profound and need to be mentioned. Firstly, the nuclear family. Mustafa states that the nuclear family is a type of family structure that comprises of a husband, wife, and child slash children. Of course, as we have explored, Edith saw that the nuclear family structure, it was the way to go as other European sociologists, as, as we established before, some saw the single parent dysfunctional. So throughout her work, she constantly talked about the nuclear family and the benefits thereof. Secondly, marriage. This was a term completely used throughout the work. Clark herself states that marriage is the union of two persons that is recognizable by law. In her work, she goes deep down, she talks about the unions, and she emphasizes that the need for marriage, as I said before, she was for the nuclear family structure. Concubinage, this is our third term. Britannica highlights that this is the state of cohabitation of a woman and a woman without the full sanctions of legal marriage. This means that they do everything together. They, they are basically, they're like husband and wife, but they are not legally married. They have not had a wedding or is it legally recognizable by the law. They do everything such as live together. They not necessarily live together. They may have children together, act as a couple, but they are not married nor Sometimes they may not want to, sometimes they just haven't done it yet. But that's what concubinage is. And this is the end of my presentation. I hope we have learned something. And uh, I hope that what I presented to here was worthwhile. I thank you all for your time. I am Trishel Gooden. And this was my presentation on Edith Clark and the development of Afro-Caribbean families. I thank you.